I'm in the confidence business. I help boost people's confidence. What gives you more confidence? Feeling better about yourself, feeling sexy, feeling like you own your body, you own yeah. the room. You love what I need. Your love is what I need. Welcome to Dating is Such a Drag podcast. I am Jean Sullivan Belecci, the Soulmate Coach, and I am here with the one and only Lady Portia, who is now today her alter ego, Marcus Hunter Neal, life coach extraordinaire. Hello, Marcus. Hello, Miss Gorgeous. How are you? I have to be fully upfront and honest. The reason why I'm not all glammed up is because pure vanity. This time tomorrow, I will be in San Francisco Bay, girl. Um, <laughs> I, look so, I look so much sexier with a little bit of facial hair as a guy. So I was not shaving. <laughs> I'm sorry. You do look very sexy and I can't wait to take you to the Golden Gate Bridge and oh, do some selfies. I think, I know. And then we're going to go to the Castro on Thursday. That is, I'm living for this. So I just think it's going to be so exciting. And I love the fact that we're going to this new living exhibition and just being surrounded by so many amazing, like-minded people from all over the world, which I just think is going to be so exciting. So thank you for making this all happen for us. Well, I'm so excited to have you there. And, you know, one of the things you and I were talking about in preparation for your trip is what are we going to wear? Where, what are we going to exactly. wear? Yeah. And it's a big part of what clients come to me about and you know they're they're worried that oh gosh i've gained a little weight during covid and i just you know i maybe i was dating my sweatpants a little bit and i got very comfortable and i didn't realize i was gaining weight and I, that happened to me as well and some of them use it as a reason not to date not to go yeah. out there and so you know one of the things that i wanted to talk about with you is you know, you and I've shared both personally that we've gained weight. How do you feel better about yourself out there in the world when you've gained a little bit of weight, you have a little bit of extra fluffiness? So interestingly, I had, I gained almost 30 pounds without realizing. And had I, had I been in my normal everyday life, that would never have happened because my normal everyday life is so active. So I went from doing cabaret shows all the time to being in meetings all over the city and jumping on and off buses, driving, walking. And anytime my clothes didn't fit, I was like, oh, okay, we need to sort of slim down. So sitting down, doing nothing, cocktails, kebabs, not moving, not leaving the house, then it creeps on, on very quickly. And I had got really buff at a period of time. And then, um, and I had that on all my grinder apps and everything like that. And then I kind of came off grinder and everything. Then I suddenly realized that I'd put on so much weight. And then whenever I went back to the apps and saw the lovely figure that was there, I actually put me off going on until I was in some, some shape to, to, to be naked again, because I just, I then became, I wasn't even comfortable looking at myself. And then I got over that very quickly because I just changed the photographs and I was like, well, actually, <laughs> take off that photograph because that was before you can get back to that but where are you now so instead of looking at the photographs of before and going that's not me i took some nice photographs of where i was at and then um and then and then moved moved on from there and the thing is you're when you look good you feel so much better and i did run a cosmetics cancer charity for years and that's what i would say to the girls and that's why the the cosmetics cancer charity was called look good feel better for the simple reason when you look good you feel better in so many different guises it, and i'm not talking about size i'm talking about um putting on a little bit of makeup or putting on um, a nice outfit because it takes the same amount of effort to put on something nice as it does to put on duds so you still have to put something on, but one will completely shift how you feel in the world. You put on sweatpants, we become lazy, we sit on the sofa, we watch box sets. And if we put on something nice, then we're going, oh, I'm, I can tick on the world. I want people to see me. <laughs> and I'm always dressed to fit rather than dressed by numbers, you know? And I think that's one of the most amazing things about our guest that's coming up because we have this awesome guest that you've found for us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about her? 
Absolutely. And, and one just quick thing I wanted to say, I just wanted to remind people that it really, if you have gained weight and many people have, yeah, there is no reason you can't feel beautiful. I was 300 pounds when I attracted my husband, but I wore clothes that made me feel beautiful and sexy and that made all the difference. And with that being said, we do have an expert who can go even deeper into this topic. We have Shelly Golden, who is a fashion stylist and she has been an executive presence image consultant and fashion stylist for over 20 years. She works with both men and women and every gender in between. She is based in San Francisco, and, but she does work online and she has a keen eye to helping people improve their confidence, their credibility, and create an image that sets them apart, both online and off. Oh, and, you know, as a, as a result- Online and off, I think we just got <laughs> up the stairs. <laughs> um, and as a result of COVID-19, one of the things that Shelly and I were talking about is that a lot of companies, you know, because they were working from home, people were like getting a gander at themselves yeah. um, on Zoom and they were like, oh my God, you know, I, I don't look good or, you know, my background is messy, but I don't know how to make it look all together. Um, and then especially with when it came to dating, a lot of people were just very afraid to let people into their homes or to have that first date online. And I think it's so important to have a video date first yeah. so that you can properly screen, get to meet somebody, read their energy, uh, get their vibe and see if you want to explore and meet this person. Because sometimes when you go on the date first, and then you find out you're not really, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. um, then you're, <laughs> it's an awkward situation. Yeah. And so Shelly's gonna tell us, she specializes in something called Zoom makeovers. And it's a process to you know, help improve your, your online presence and make that positive first impression from your authentic style. And that's what it's all about. So without further ado, shall we let Shelly in? I think so. Shells, the floor is yours, woohoo. Everybody. Hi! Oh, hi there, Shelly. Shelly's so in the glamorous. house. I love it. You look gorgeous. Glad to be here. Super glad to be here. I feel somewhat left out because I'm not wearing glasses, and these two glamour girls are. <laughs> Hold on. Well, I, I I could take them off, but you would be very very blurry. <laughs> I do have some nice glasses sitting about somewhere. I normally do. You have a lot of really beautiful glasses, Marcus. Here, what do you see? Ta da! <laughs> Excellent. Oh, <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Love it. So, Shelly, one of the things that we really wanted to chat with you about is what have you noticed since the pandemic has changed the way people are dressing and shopping? Because that's going to be a big impact on how they actually use Zoom, for example, as a dating tool to screen people with. So, they have to make that first impression. Absolutely. So as an image consultant for, you know, I'm going to just say 20 plus years, <laughs> 20, 25 plus years, there has been a huge shift in what people are asking me for. And the one thing that everybody's asking men, women, is that they want soft, stretchy clothing. That's really what they're asking for. It needs to be really soft. I think coming out of this this COVID pandemic where everybody was wearing lounge clothes, exercise clothes, pajamas, sweatshirts. They were dating their sweatpants. Mm. Yes, exactly. You know, whether you saw them or not, but <laughs> that's what people want. And so in terms of what they're buying, it's, a, it's less stiff. It's more relaxed and that that's one of the biggest shift. But the question is, how do you how do you achieve looking nice in the way you want to look nice, whatever is nice for you? Com comfortable. Everybody wants to be comfortable because God knows we've all been you know, hanging out, sitting either at a computer or on a sofa in bed for the last couple of years. And but still look your best. Mm -hmm. Wearing the best colors, the best shapes for your face uh, that help you stand out. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I, and yeah. And I love that because Marcus. I, because I did so much work on Zoom and just worried really about the top half. And that's really all that I, I was worrying about. And because I didn't have on nice trousers for nearly two years, um, whenever life opened up again, literally, I didn't notice that none of my trousers didn't fit. So I actually end up gaining nearly 30 pounds over the lockdown, which would never have happened in a million years if my trousers, every time my trousers kept feeling a little bit tight, I cut back. But because I had no benchmark, it meant that my waist could get bigger and bigger and bigger because I wasn't really paying that much attention to it. And you're seeing yourself every day. So it's difficult unless you have some something to measure that your clothes don't fit when everything's big and loose, loose and comfy. I came across an amazing thing just the other day and I'm wearing it, going to be wearing it in San Francisco. So I've managed to get 16 pounds off. So um, I'm starting to get back into some yes. of my original clothes. Um, so some of my tops fit. So it's like chinos and it's, it's, and they're really comfortable and they're chino stretch material. And at the back they're, they're all elasticated the whole way around. So I, I, I wear chinos and shirts, that's my, that's my thing. So I'm actually able to get the best of both worlds in a chino that has stretch. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point, Marcus, because I myself have gained about 30 pounds mm -hmm. and I had the same thing. I was wearing sweats all the time and I didn't realize over time how I had gained. I, I, I was now two sizes larger. And I'm seeing that a lot of my clients, and it's one of the reasons they hold back from dating because they feel like I don't look my best. And I, I, I just, I don't think I want to put myself out there. And I remind them, well, I was 300 pounds when I attracted my husband, but I also was really dressing in a way that I felt really sexy and, and comfortable and beautiful. And I'm just curious, Shelly, I'm sure you must get clients who feel a little insecure about their weight gain how do you help them to see that it's really not about the weight? Help them see that it's not about the weight is really to get new clothing mm -hmm. that you feel fabulous in. Yeah. That really hides, as, as sometimes I call myself the queen of camouflage. Mm -hmm. Textile <laughs> queen and queen of camouflage. Those are my two queen bee uh, labels. If you where a stiffer fabric as opposed to t-shirt fabric, something that's really, really soft that hugs your body, that's going to show your different shapes underneath. Mm -hmm. And that's what people feel uncomfortable with. So if you want to camouflage your love handles, your, your muffin top, whatever you want to call it, Wear a slightly stiffer, thicker fabric, and that will sometimes drape over as opposed to hug and, sh and, and, and be super shapely. Mm -hmm. uh, by, by having this thicker fabric, it'll, it'll hang stiffer and it'll hang and camouflage what needs to be camouflaged. So avoid That's things like spandex, you know, things that hug your, your body. Right, spandex. So, you know, interesting. You, you both have mentioned about gaining weight. When I was in college, it, it was it's like it was a light bulb that went off. I would come home, and I'd put my sweats on, and I'd hang out in my sweats, and I gained twenty pounds because it was comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I learned not to do that this time. Mm -hmm. I put on jeans. And I wore jeans almost every day because the thing about wearing clothes as opposed to, uh, you know, tape fitted clothes as opposed to stretchy sweats and, 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 and leggings is that you can feel when it's getting yeah. tight. And my suggestion is, as I mentioned, get some new clothes that fit your body for where you are today. Yeah. Camouflage what needs to be camouflaged, make your face the main event. So whether you have a V neck, you have an open neck, because this will draw the attention away from what's ever down there 
to the upper part, whether you're on Zoom or in person. If you have an open neckline, it'll draw the attention to your face. Yeah. And that's really what you want because you want people to be able to read your, your face. You want them to read some of your upper body, nonverbal body language. And also if you're on a date, it's nice to show a little bit of neck or, you know, whatever. The other thing as well, I love what you're saying because I hate when you see people and, and their clothes are right up to there. And then if they do have any form of like a double chin or anything like that, it almost makes it look so much bigger. So a, a good low V is, is great. And also like I have a scarf just draped around me. This is a lovely shirt, but just to add that little bit of va-va-voom or, you know, if you're, if you're wearing something like you're saying a stiffer material, you could put like a layer over it, you know, like a, a nice cardigan or an open waistcoat. Oh, there you are. You've got a, speaking of, speaking of nice layers there in the background. A little preview of Jason. <laughs> um, okay. Actually for men, I have some tips. Mm -hmm. For men, if you wear a cut like which you have on Marcus, a, a, co a shirt with a collar, mm -hmm. you want to make sure to make, it, you know, we were talking about gaining weight. Of course, not everybody's gained weight, but if in the event you have, you want to make sure that your collar is, has a very specific fold as opposed to sometimes if you take it to the cleaners, they, they press it flat. Mm -hmm. If you have it standing up really like add attention, you know, very, very crisp. Sometimes yeah. you could have like a button down. Sometimes there's a hidden button, but yeah. if you have it really a crisp collar, what it does is it hides your yeah. other chins, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's a way to slim down how you look in a three dimensional uh, space. It also helps in a two dimensional space, which we're on now. But by having this higher neck, uh, women as well, you could have a higher neck and it, it just actually hides some of that extra flesh. Or of a certain age. Or of a certain age. Uh, it gives you, <laughs> the main thing is I'm in, I'm in the confidence business. I help boost people's confidence. What gives you more confidence? Feeling better about yourself, feeling sexy, feeling like you own your body, you own yeah. the room. It's, that's, I love that you, you say that because I used to run um, cancer workshops for, and I would teach women how to do their um, eyebrows and lashes and all, this, and all the little hints and tricks to make it look like your hair was there when you'd lost it all. And it was actually called look good, feel better. Because when you look good, you feel so much better. And what I would always say to the women is buy clothes that fit and don't look at the number. So don't look at what size it is because you will look far more sexier, slimmer and glamorous if the clothes fit well versus you trying to squeeze yourself in. Because the biggest mistake that people make is they're like, I'm a size 10. And then they get a size 10 and they look fine standing up like this in the mirror. But then they go out for dinner and they're like, it's like everything's moving and they sit down. And I, my go-to is how do I look sitting down in it? Because if I'm going some, if I'm, I'm not always going to be standing, you know, the, there's some of my drag stuff that are only standing outfits. You know, I will never yeah. sit down in them. <laughs> like as a guy, you know, we need to, you, or, or, or as women, if you're sitting down and having dinner, you want to sit down and feel relaxed, but you can still feel relaxed and um, wear something nice. Yeah. That's yeah. a really good point. You know, and I, I just wanted to just follow up. I, I gave some tips on men, you know, to kind of hide and make a, a mm -hmm. taller, leaner, thinner look. Um, first of all, I, I wrote this blog and called How to Look Taller and Leaner. And that blog was the, is my number one blog, interestingly. Wow. Love it. <laughs> but, for, but for women, the same thing <clears throat> holds true. For women, if, again, this whole thing is not about weight, but if you've gained weight, chances are you have more flesh that maybe you're not feeling comfortable with. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the, one of the tricks is have, if you're wearing, say, I'm wearing a sweater right now, have the sweater come closer to your neck. So here's a visual example. If you have something that's closer to your neck, you look slimmer mm. and, and it draw, we're creating yeah. a vertical wow. line yes. in my face 
and what you could see here. Whereas if I take my sweater and, and, and have more flesh showing, you know, making it wider, I actually, now your, your eye is going left to right, I look wider. Whereas I also have kind of, I don't, I have very muscular tight um, traps. Is this trap? <clears throat> But if I, if I, again, if I keep it close to my neck, it creates a slimmer look, mm. just an optical illusion. Because what you want to do sometimes is create vertical looks. Mm. And that doesn't mean stripes, it's contrast. So here we have the contrast between my skin, I have light skin and a colorful top. Whereas if you have dark skin, you can do the other, the other contrast. Yeah darker skin, lighter top, so that we see a vertical line. And for a, say we're, we're at Zoom, right? And you and I have matched on Tinder and I'm getting very excited and I'm like, oh, we're gonna go on our first date. What would be an ideal, what's a good style to wear for a first date? Do you dress up or is it lounge clothes or is it like, do you make an effort or not make an effort because you're at home or what would be a good, like starting point as to a first date if you were on Zoom? Um, to, to, uh, if you're on Zoom, first of all, I would not wear black, mm -hmm. number one, and I would not wear white. I often, that, that those are the two colors I usually tell people to stay away from, and let me tell you why. So I'm gonna tell you what not to wear, and then I'll tell you what, yep. what I suggest. Yep. Mm -hmm. The reason not to wear black is because Black absorbs the color and it literally becomes, you become a black hole because the camera doesn't pick it up the, the darkness. It only picks up white and light. And what you want is you want people to be able to read your body language. If, you, they, if what you're wearing creates this black hole, they can't read your body language. And when you're on a first date, you want people to be able to read you as clearly as possible, which means your face and your torso, if that's what they're seeing. Uh, and, and the opposite, don't wear white, because then the camera picks up white and light first, if you're on Zoom or any of the other platforms. And what'll happen is people will focus on your clothing and not your face. Mm -hmm. You want people to see your face and your torso equally. So uh, in terms of what to wear, <clears throat> I would wear something that's con that contrasts your background, whatever that is. If you have dark wood furniture, wear something lighter but not white. Mm -hmm. If you have a, all this light color behind you, wear something that's colorful. I usually say solid color, even though I'm not wearing a solid color today, but it comes off looking relatively solid red, sort of. Mm -hmm. Wear a solid color that's a little bit bolder in color so that people will be attracted to your face and what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And make it comfortable. I would not go too formal, I would not go too, you know, really make it you, because you want to show people who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're kind what, of a funky person, wear something funky, you know. Like my you, hat. What? Like your hat, yes. <laughs> Shelly, I just wanted to ask, because I remember it when I took one of your talks, you talked about the colors uh, like of lipstick and glasses, and you were saying like for lipstick, for example, don't wear brown, is that right? Brown looks black. So could you go into a little more detail about colors, you know, what looks best on certain um, people? Uh, colors of makeup or colors of clothing, would you like me to? Both. To okay. I would say both. Just a few quick and dirty tips that come to mind because um, sometimes people think, okay, I really look better in earth tones, but it doesn't really translate across the screen. Right. Just to reiterate, the camera picks up white and light first and darkens everything else. <clears throat> the camera also doesn't necessarily pick up 
colors per se. So it doesn't pick up the fine tuning of whether you're wearing pink blush or berry colored blush. Right. <clears throat> but what you do want is you want, I often say and for people who wear makeup, it's not everybody wears makeup and I'm not specifying men or women, by putting on lipstick on your lips, there's also Zoom lipstick that I could actually show you how to do. Uh, by putting on a lipstick, it, it brings the attention to your lips so people can read your lips. It's giving them a bullseye. I sometimes say, let's, let's create a bullseye right here so that you can focus in on me and read my face, read my nonverbal, read my lips. Mm -hmm. So it gives them a place to look and read your lips. You, you don't want your lips too light. You don't want to have too light of a lipstick and you don't want to have too dark because anything dark comes off very black. Unless that's really who you are, that you wear black a lipstick goth. all the time. You know, if you are really goth, that's who you are. But if you have something more natural or brighter, but not too bright. All right, a little tip on lip gloss and lipstick. For light colored skin, you do not want to have any uh, uh, iridescence. You don't want any, sh any uh, frost in your makeup because what happens, think of the frost as like ground up pearls. It catches the light of the camera and it becomes, it, it literally looks white. Whether you have frosted blue shadow on or frosted blue blush or frosted lipstick, it comes off looking white. If you wear lip gloss, the lip gloss catches the light and it literally becomes this white light like movement that's irritating. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if you are dark skinned, again, we want the contrast. You want to wear the frosted makeup. You want to wear frost in your lipstick. So this way, the light will pick up the contrast between light and dark because the camera, especially on Zoom, is all about the contrast of light and dark. I was curious, Shelley, um, I, you know, we've all heard about with colors, whether we're men or women or whatever, wherever, whatever gender identity we, we identify with, there, we all have seasonal colors, right? Like I'm considered a winter because I have dark hair, dark eyes, and naturally a little bit of olive in my skin. I'm just curious, is there really truth to those seasons and how do we know what we are and, and what kinds of colors we should wear? Uh, so I am a, a certified color consultant. Thank you for asking that. I'm actually gonna reach over and grab a color palette. Uh, and I just happen to have this within arm's reach. Oh, this one happens to be mine. I, I have about four of them there. <laughs> just happen to have grabbed mine. So as a, as a color consultant, one of the things that I, you, I do, and, and you're not seeing the true colors online, is I do uh, color palettes for people. Uh, and by taking into consideration your skin, your actual skin color, your, your actual hair color, eye color, lip color, and creating a palette out of that, that it all matches, it all works together. If you sometimes, I'm sure you've seen, somebody walks into a room and they're wearing this, a colored, let's say, a dress, a, a suit, a, a, a scarf, a, you know, something that's consuming a lot of their body. And you're like, whoa, whoa, that color is just, me, a color doesn't work with them. Mm -hmm. You want to wear, it, yes, there are seasonal colors and it's very difficult to explain this in, in, in a quickie right. uh, little discussion, but you really need to be cognizant of what colors look best on you. How do you know? If you look at a color, for example, I'm just gonna grab a color over here. Maybe it's not my best color. How about if I grab this color? Say you're in a store and you're looking for a top, 
let's take some sort of top, a shirt, a top, and you put the color next to you and you look in the mirror and you want to see a couple of things. You want to see whether you look washed out and gray. Do you look yellow? Does it make you look yellow? Does it make the whites of your eyes look yellow or gray? That's not the right color. Mm. If you choose a color and you, again, put it next to you, say you find a top, you kind of like go, oh, let me see. And you see, wow, it makes my cheeks look naturally pink. It makes the whites of my eyes look naturally whiter. Then you know you're in the right ballpark. Mm. Well, that's an amazing tip because a lot of people get confused about the seasons. I know I did when I colored my hair. Um, so that's a really helpful tip. Also, wow. another good another good guide are your girlfriends. <laughs> if you walk down the stairs and they're like, oh my God, you look gorgeous. It's a winner. If you walk down the stairs and they're like, oh, fuck, you look great. <laughs> You know, I've been in like girlfriend like parties where they're, they're shopping for clothes and you don't know what other people's tastes are. Yeah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. so sometimes I think that holds true, but sometimes not. You, my, um, my daughter is, I adopted her when she was five and a half years old from China and she never chose any of her clothing for, for until she was, I don't know, 12. And I would take her shopping and she would just stand there like this. Like, I don't know, mom, what do you think? And then one time she put something on that I said, here, try this on. <laughs> and she looked at herself in the mirror and had this little smile like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Look, look at this little, the little, little smile that's coming out on your face. And like, that's what you want. So when I'm working with clients and they put something on and they're like, wow. Mm -hmm. As soon as you like have that, like that feeling of, wow, I look yeah. pretty good. Then yeah. you know that works. And what happens also as you get older, men, women, your body is what your body is, right? You find that there are certain styles, certain cuts, that just work for you. Sometimes I think of Queen Elizabeth in, in England, that she wears the same damn styles for the last 70 years because it works. Mm -hmm. and, and slight variance the older that she gets. So from the tailored to the slightly looser to now she wears those lovely block colors and it's usually a lovely big coat over a dress and in the summertime, it'll be a lighter coat over a dress. And, and she, yeah, she has it nailed, I think. Right. You know, Absolutely. it's, and, and, you know, you see people wear the same styles for years and years because for the most part, that's what works. It gets a little boring, but Hey, you know, it is what it is. Well, shall I tell you something? I find that I, I would hate anyone ever to call me fashionable because I don't want to be fashionable. I'd rather be stylish because when you have your own sense of style, you're never mm -hmm. going to go out of fashion. Fashion is so disposable and it comes and goes so quickly. Whereas for the, literally the last 10, maybe 15 years, my wardrobe has been spring, summer, I have done nautical and autumn, winter, I've done country gent and everything mixes and matches in between them all, except the difference in I'll wear the same shirt um, in summer and winter. In winter, I have a cravat and a waistcoat over it. In the summer, I have the collar up, rolled sleeves rolled up and a jumper over, over my, my shoulders, but it's the same shirt that travels through. And that way I never have to think about clothes or worried. No, at the minute I am one stone over, 14 pounds over where I should be. But in three, I would say another month and a half, I'll be back into everything. And then I don't, I don't need to worry and think. So my, one of my personal big things that I always try to say is be stylish in your own sense of style because it never gets boring hearing people say you look good. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I'm known for my, my berets now you know, that I, I really have a lot of fun, you know, finding ones that really express how I feel inside about myself. And, you know, everybody has their own thing. And, I'm, and that's part of what you do, right? You help people to find what their thing is, because sometimes people are so wrapped up in not being judged that they don't really have the courage to wear what they really want. 
Yeah, and, and I think one of the things I've noticed as well, especially if a little bit if you're an introvert, more so than for extroverts, because I'm sure you work with a lot of introverts, mm -hmm. is introverts are, of course, afraid to stand out. And what does that mean in terms of clothing? It usually means afraid to wear color. Mm -hmm. Step out of your comfort zone, buy one thing. So again, check the color. Does it make your cheeks look naturally pink? Does it make your eyes look brighter? Try one thing in color. Try, try a little bit, adding a little more color. It could just be a pop of color for a scarf. It could be a top. But by adding a little more color, you might feel a little more confident to take that next step out. One final thing where we've talked about the clothes, we've talked about, you know, makeup and everything. Is the background as, 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 as important as anything else? Absolutely. <clears throat> if you're on a Zoom date or you're, you're speaking to somebody on, on Zoom or whatever platform you choose, mm -hmm. It's part of you. Like if, if you're especially a first date and you have a mess behind you, are you in your garage? Or are you in the yeah. kitchen? Do they see you live in an old house, a new house, a modern house? You live in an edgy, cool house. You have lots of cats and dogs walking around. It gives people an, an eye, a window into your life. <clears throat> Think of it this way. It's not so much as I'm sitting in my space having a Zoom call with you, think of it as that you're inviting somebody into your house who you're meeting for the first time on a first date. Yeah. Or a second date. Yeah. Think of it that way. How do you want your house to show up? How do you want your home or your room, however, whatever, make your bed. If your bed is behind you, make your yeah. bed. But um, also, if you're gonna have, say, a sofa behind you, it's best to keep it clean, take away, patterned pillows. Sometimes you'll have a sofa with different pillows, a solid color and a pattern and a square and, you know, big patterns. Make it better to have them be solid colors behind you versus busy patterns. Also, one of the things that I think is always really, really nice is to have some sort of plant or flower. Uh, it just, again, it, it you're welcoming people into your house. If you went to a restaurant and you it went to this lovely restaurant, you might have some flowers on the table. There might be plants around. It just makes it warm and welcoming. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> well, some amazing tips there. I, I, I love, my house is filled with flowers and plants and, and everything. I can see so that. It looks great. beautiful. <laughs> and this actually, this is a fake cherry blossom, but I just set it there just to add a little bit of, of depth in the, in the picture. And it kind of, gently covers the, the, the TV. So it's just enough and, and it's a nice uh, talking point as well. Well, there has been some amazing talking points there and all of your links are below. It has been such a joy chatting to you and your background is as beautiful as your clothes, as your advice, as is your face. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Hi, Oh, wasn't she amazing? She was so fabulous. And she's got so much more to, to talk about. It yeah. was just really hard to narrow it down. But I, I hope people really got a lot of tips out of that. And I hope we'll have her back then. So we can delve Absolutely. a little bit deeper into things. Yeah. And I love For that sure. it's the whole picture. It's the, it's the background. It's how you look. It's your makeup. It's your lighting. You know, all that type of thing as well, which is amazing. So thank you very much. That was a wonderful um, get. You did a wonderful job. So we've got, a, we have a, a letter in here. And this it comes in from Sydney. And Sydney says, hey, girls. Hey, girl. <laughs> Hey, Sydney. <laughs> hey, Sydney. Um, and she says, I am a huge fan of the show and I look forward to it every single week. I love you guys. You give out the best advice ever. I am following a lot of your hints and tips and I have been finding a lot more quality dates rather than quantity. And out of the four people that I had um, been dating, I can see two who are life potentials 
Wow, that is that's that's big that's that's big words there. Life potentials. Um, Cup runneth over. <laughs> yeah, my my biggest problem is over the pandemic. I have gained a lot of weight more than I have ever gained in my life. I am over the age of forty. I'll not say what. And I'm finding it more difficult to get the weight off. I am losing a little bit of motivation. And also with my age, I don't know whether I'm hitting menopause or I've just become <laughs> lazy. But how do I get round the fact that I am this size and I don't feel comfortable in my shape? Um, and my, I'm not comfortable in the shape and the, my favorite clothes don't fit me anymore. Do you guys have any top tips for dating as a new plus size girl? Oh, Sydney. Um, Sydney, I've got lots to say on that. My first thing is, if you have been dating people now, they didn't know what you looked like before. So they're dating you now because of how you look right now. So anything else is, is, a, is a bonus. And my, one of my big things that I will always say is always dress to your shape. Dress to what fits and not by the number. Forget the number on the clothes. You will look slimmer, sexier, and you will feel so much more glamorous if your clothes feel good against your skin. If your clothes feel tight and you're wearing the wrong size, you're going to feel uncomfortable, you're going to look uncomfortable, you're going to be constantly pulling and fitting things down and, you know, fidgeting. So go with everything that fits. Also, my dating history is like the United Colors of Benetton. I, it is also, I have dated every shape and size and height. I am attracted by people and not the package that they are in. So if you're dating, if you've been on four with four different um, people and you're whittled down to two, they see something in you more than you're seeing in yourself right now. And you need to reconnect with yourself and fall in love with Sydney, just like these other two lifers have. That's my top tip for you. Jean Jeannie? <laughs> Absolutely. All those tips that Marcus gave you, but also um, a lot of it is about you accepting yourself and loving yourself at any size. Again, you know, I was quite Rubenesque when I met my husband. And one of the ways um, I think it's important for you to feel comfortable right now, I mean, we can give you a lot of weight loss tips, but it's important to feel beautiful and sexy right now. I know what I did is I actually took belly dancing mm. back before I started to <laughs> date my husband. And funny enough, one of his dreams after, you know, we had been talking for a while, one of his dreams was to date somebody who had belly dancing. So it was kind of a law of attraction manifestation wow. there. But, <laughs> but for me, that movement helped me to feel not only in my body and really grounded in my body, but it helped me to feel sensual, helped me to feel connected to my sensuality. And a lot of people in the belly dancing world, both male and female, were quite Rubenesque and mm -hmm. it's celebrated. So it made me feel um, you know, accepted and it made me feel like it's okay to be, to be larger. Um, as far as menopause goes, goes, it does, it does start to make your metabolism slow down, but I think it's important not to get attached as Marcus was saying in terms of size, it's not, it's important not to attach to numbers as well as how quickly you're losing weight. I think it's about starting to slowly make food changes, maybe start to swipe out, you know, the, any chips you may be eating and, and substitute it for maybe fresh also, vegetables. You remember a couple of weeks ago when we had Diana on and she went for an allergy, she, she went for the, the allergy oh, testing right. and she just changed two things in her diet and lost a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, the, at different ages that we're at, you know, it could be now that our bodies are changing ever so slightly. We might be developing different allergies and our metabolism changes mm -hmm. to different foods. So try something like that as well. Um, and enjoy, look, 
love the life you're living. Who cares what shape or size you are? The bigger you are, the more there is to love. That's what I think. <laughs> and I absolutely love every single week here with you, Jean Jeannie. And I cannot wait, now that I know that you're a belly dancer, whenever we're out having cast cocktails in the Castro, I will <laughs> know that I'm going to get you to do some belly dancing. Absolutely. I'll teach you a few moves. It's all Woo! about the knees. Oh, it's all about the knees? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll stock up on my calcium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, until we meet again, if you have had, if you've enjoyed the podcast, please like, share, subscribe. If you want to send us a letter, just like Sydney did, it is very easy to get in touch with us. We are on datingissuchadrag.com and our email address is datingissuchadrag.com. Oh, at gmail.com. Um, so please feel free to hook us up there. And as always, Jeannie, this time tomorrow, We'll be together. Woohoo! So until we meet again, take care, be good, and Jeannie? If you can't, can't be, be good, good, be good. Be at good it. at it. Ciao, ciao for <laughs> now. Jet lag. Bye. Your love is what I need.